go go acid flow let's do it so we said command n arg r acid command is used for the switch statement and we said we're going to go into that so boom easy peasy on our way now the argument is attacker controlled and for completeness i'm going to show the full acid flow arg taints message and a message has a structure that looks like this so it's going to have three unsigned ints followed by a 256 byte buffer okay so now it's going to use message byte 2 index 2 and byte index 1 and byte index 0 and it's going to bit shift those so that effectively this is going to be the least significant byte this is the second least significant and this is the most significant and it puts that into ca last command then it uses that for a switch and i said specifically it's going to hit this right there now this is defined as a fixed hard-coded value 3289f and that means that these no longer are going to be fully attacker controlled instead they must be 3289f if they want to hit the control flow that is going to go here so i think it's helpful to you know start showing something like a buffer that the attacker is sending from user space into kernel space to get a sense of you know what is attacker controlled and what is not so the attacker must set exactly these values at exactly these byte positions in order to reach this control flow now in CAPMT, we've got arg again, attacker controlled. It's a CA message, cool. So now CA, now uh, message three is ended with 80. And that has to be, that bit has to be one in the message of three in order to get into this code. And otherwise it's going to get into this code. So we're gonna consider this and we'll assume that it hits on that. Now, while the attacker does control the exit condition here, in practice, all they can really do is cause this to loop multiple times and ultimately create a data length that will have a maximum value of FFF. Because basically it's gonna take this attacker controlled value, it's going to move the data position forward. So each time through this loop, it's gonna move that position forward. And then it's going to take the data length, which started as zero, and it's going to shift it up by eight. So basically data length is being pulled from the data length itself. And ultimately this can only you know, happen four times before it ultimately just sort of wraps around the bounds of the maximum 32 bit available size. And so consequently the maximum value one, two, three, four, it's gonna loop through there multiple times. And the maximum value an attacker can pass in is data length equal to FFF because it's grabbing essentially one byte at a time. Now keep in mind that data length is signed and therefore that would be you know, potentially interpreted as a negative value as opposed to a positive value. So let's get into the next function and see how it's going to interpret it. Data length passed into this with attacker controlled data and the data position has been moved forward based on these bytes that have been uh, plucked out of the buffer and now we are here. So essentially it could look something like this. We said that that bit for the 80 has to be set in order to get into that control flow. And then that lower bits are essentially going to control how many times it looped through. And so then it went one, two, three, four, and it pulled in all Fs to that data length. All right, now in AVCA PMT, the length is interpreted as a signed value, which probably is not the programmer's intention, but oh well. So now we've got the message at this point has been moved forward by that, you know, data position that it got moved forward. And so now there's only effectively 248 bytes left of the 256 byte buffer that had been sent from user space to kernel space. Now it is going to be copying data from this attacker controlled buffer into this C operand, which is a maximum of 509 bytes. So obviously neither of these are to scale. So moving forward, we go ahead and have our attacker controlled value. And it says, if this is not equal to that, then we're going to you know, set it equal to that. So essentially this now is a non attacker controlled thing. It's gonna have to be exactly that hard coded value. That then is subsequently placed into list management. And now we have some actual attacker controlled values at message five and message four. And so essentially this is the least significant byte. This is shifted up by eight and it's bitwise ended with F. So practically speaking, although this is an attacker controlled value and you know, if it's a greater than zero, it's gonna hit this right there. So the practical maximum value that this program info length can have is FFE because this could be FF and this could be 
FF as well, but because it's ended with 0F, it's going to turn into just 0F. And so 0F, FF, and then minus, minus means F, FE is the maximum value. All right, then another attack controlled value, message of 6, put into this PMT command ID. More acid, corrupting things, corrupting things, corrupting things. So these are being placed into that C operand uh, value uh, buffer that I was showing in blue in the previous picture. So we're just going to, you know, we snipped out some of this code. Um, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that's not relevant to the ultimate overflow, but I just figured I'd put those in there because I'm going to show some animations to show the attack controlled values starting to fill in the operand. And then we have the program info length, which again we said is a maximum of FFE. So this downshifted by eight would be, you know, putting maximum of F into that byte and then ended with FF. So FE going into that byte. All right, so this is then what things look like. You have, you know, all Fs right there. And then you had this had to be three. That was that hard coded value at uh, the zeroth value of this new 250, uh, 248 byte buffer. And then whatever was at index one, so if this was index zero, this is index one, whatever was at index one here is going to get copied over here into operand of, you know, whatever, let's say message of one is operand of 15. Oh, now I got to go through all the animations again. Go, 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 go. That's why we don't go backwards. Right, one goes into one at index 15, two goes into two, three goes into, sorry, one into 15, two into 16, etc. And then we said the maximum value would be from here. It was uh, FF originally, but because there was a minus one after it was pulled into a local variable, it turns into FE. All right, scrolling forward. Now we have some, you know, reposition is set to six, right position is set to 24. This program info length, if it's greater than zero here, we're assuming it's FFE. So if it's that, we get into this message, read position. So starting out at six, read position value, and then read position plus plus is put into PMT CMD ID, right? So that gets set to an attack control value and the reposition has been moved forward to seven. Now down here, we're checking that and we're saying, is that, you know, not equal to four? And if so, we're going to have an error. Is that not equal to one? And if so, we're going to have an error. So basically, you know, one of those has to be the case for that particular value. So that constrains what that could possibly be. Now, right here, we start to have some actual functional constraints on this uh, program info length. So it says if program link info length is greater than the size of the C operand, which is that 509 byte buffer that we're copying stuff into, minus four, minus right position, which is 24 here, then it's going to error out. So for all intents and purposes, now instead of being FFE maximum value, this can only be 481, because that's 509 minus four minus 24. And if it's exactly equal to that, this will not be true and it'll continue on. But if it is uh, you know, greater than that, greater than 481, then it will hit this error condition and exit out. Now we've got our 481 max value being used as a size for a mem copy, and we've got reading attack control data for the mem copy, and that should be causing your splitty sense to go off. We've got a sassy length that's reasonably big, and we've got a acid content for the source being written into some buffer. Well, we once more go back to our common root causes and we remind ourselves that the sweet potato is that unbounded thing, but it turns out that this is safe. It is safe for some value of safe. So this, when we go ahead and visualize it, looks something like this. So the reposition was at seven, the right position is at 24, and we are now going to copy a maximum possible value at this point. The only thing, you know, with all the sanity checks, the maximum value we could possibly copy is 481 bytes. So if we started at 24 and we copied 481 bytes, that is not enough to overflow the bounds of this 509 byte buffer. So it is quote unquote safe from buffer overflowing, but we started at reposition seven, we copied 481 bytes, and that's too many bytes. That's more bytes than we have for a message, this attack controlled buffer that was passed from user space to kernel space. So 
that is going to be an out-of-bound read. That is a potential thing like an information leak vulnerability, but that is a future module for the class. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you this notion of, well, this thing is definitely copying too much data out of this buffer, like past the bounds of the buffer. And I'm going to say that this coloration is going to indicate that, well, it might be uninitialized or it might be fully attacker controlled data. And, you know, it's all going to depend on what the attacker can do to manipulate allocations. It's going to depend on where exactly this is stored. And so for now, we're going to assume that that is uh, attacker controlled data and not just uninitialized garbage off the end of the buffer. And I'll show a little bit of a justification later to explain why I think that could be fully attacker controlled. Back to our non-pretty picture and the banality of code. We had that mem copy and we said it is safe that it is not going to buffer overflow the operand quite yet. But if we did use that maximum size of 481 here, then the read position is going to be out of bounds and it's going to be you know, six plus one plus 481 and a maximum value of 488. So that is out of bounds at this point. And the right position is going to similarly have a maximum of 481 added to it, which gives you 505, which is still going to be in bounds. So reading from out of bounds of a buffer is generally not good and generally understood to be a vulnerability and a problem, or at least a bug at the very least. So let's continue on and see what happens next. Okay, so now we have the semi attack controlled read position and we have the fully attack controlled length. And so we said that could be FFF as the maximum value. But as I was literally recording this, I was like, okay, and you know, FFF is greater than this value. You know, it's uh, 488 or whatever it is. But then as I was recording this, I was like, wait a second. Length was that integer argument, signed integer argument that was passed into the function. So that would be negative one. And 488 is not, you know, less than negative one. Negative one is less than 488. Now, all of a sudden I had this existential crisis and I was like, oh my God, what's going on here? I go back and I, you know, read the original write up. And yes, they said, you know, this could be FFF max. So I think what happened is, you know, the original researcher wasn't remembering that this was a signed integer and therefore this is going to be a signed comparison. Both of these are signed values. So it's a signed comparison. So you're not going to get away with FFFFs as a way to successfully get down here where the actual vulnerability is. So what can we do about this? Is there anything we can do to, you know, rest, snatch victory from the jaws of defeat? Yes, indeed there is. We can go ahead and just set this to seven FFFF instead. So a very large positive number instead of that negative value. And so is 488 less than seven FFF? Yes, it is. And this thing will just, you know, keep copying until read position is up to seven FFF, which of course is gonna go super out of bounds. So then we have reading from the message at the read position and writing to the C operand. And at this point, you should have your spoily sense of tingling because we've got an attacker controlled exit condition with a manual memory copy inside of a loop. And that is one of our cases. That is the caret case. That is the case of a attacker controlled exit condition. All right, so then I'm just going to, you know, keep showing all of the various tainting of data that's going to occur. You can see that, you know, some values get used to set another length, and then the reposition is moved forward by two, and then that length is checked. If it's positive, they do a minus minus. Then they, you know, so again, that's based on, you know, this uh, ending with zero F, this is again a maximum FFE value. And that then gets written out to the operand thing. Again, it's checked for if it's positive, and if so, then it continues on down to here. Attack controlled values, attack controlled values everywhere. Okay, so there's just one little bit here that I want to point out before moving on. So this right position, we started out saying that the maximum possible value would be 505 right here, but then it was incremented here. So there'd be 506 after this, 507, 508, 509, 510 after this. So basically right position at this point has a maximum value of 510, which theoretically would be out of bounds of the uh, right thing, right? This is only a 509 byte buffer. So you're already essentially seeing why this is not safe. But just in case, you know, you happen to see this mem copy down here and you thought that that was the vulnerability, I want to explain why that's not. So we said right position 
could be set to 510 maximum, but in practice, because of the sanity check, if you set it to any value greater than or equal to 505, it would hit this error condition. So why is that? It's because this size of, that was a 509, the buffer is 509, so 509 minus four is 505. And if you then subsequently subtracted another 505, you would get zero, and you'd basically be saying, if this value is greater than zero, error out. And that's not what you want, right? That wouldn't help. So, okay, instead of 505, this could be 504. And then you'd say, if this value is greater than 509 minus four or minus 504 equals one. So if this value is greater than one, error out. If this value is greater than two, error out. So essentially you can see that this value can only increase as this value goes down. And so this is a properly bounded thing where although this is semi-attack controlled, when it's ultimately handed into this mem copy, because the practical speaking, you know, this could be one and this could be 504, this mem copy is not ultimately going to write out of bounds if you write to write position 504 a single byte. That's still within the 509 bounds of this. So that's why that mem copy is not actually the vulnerability. You know, I would understand if your spoity sense was tangling, and if so, that's good because you should be tingling, but this is actually safe. And it's not just safe, it's a red herring because it looks like it's a problem, but you really have to uh, examine the sanity checks closely to see that it's not a problem. So let's go ahead and back right up to understand how this was actually buffer overflowing with some concrete values. So this read position we said is a maximum of 488s, and we know that this is gonna be a semi-attack controlled value now. We saw that there were sanity checks here. So let's go through concretely and say, if it had a maximum value after this, where it was way out of bounds of the source buffer, but we're gonna assume that that is attack controllable for reasons I'll explain shortly. 488 means that this would essentially be doing M message of 488 being written into O operand of 505, and then 489 into 506, 490 into 507. And then to make this nice and exploitable, let's say that the attacker chose to set this value to zero. So if this value was equal to zero, sorry, if it's greater than zero, it would do a minus minus, but it's not greater than zero, so it's not gonna do that. Then it goes down here and just writes that zero into 508, which is the last valid position in operand, and then it writes zero again into 509, which is a overflow. This is an out of bounds write. So now because the ES info length is not greater than zero, it's not going to go in here and it's just going to loop around in this while loop and it's now going to have, you know, read position equal to whatever it is, 491 after this, and then it's just gonna keep going buffer overflowing. So let's try to visualize that. We had 488 going into 505, 489 into 506, 490 into 507, a zero into 508, the last valid location in this 509 byte buffer, and then boom, a zero going out of bounds. Oh no, it's a single byte, you know, overflow. What's the attacker gonna do with that? Well, they actually get to keep doing this, right? Because this is a while loop and while read position is less than some super gigantic value, so it's just gonna keep going out of bounds. So because there was this extra read position plus equals two in here, we're gonna start with read position at 493. And so this would essentially be M of 493 goes into O of 510, M of 494 into 511 and so forth, right? And again, as long as the attacker keeps setting this semi-attacker controlled value equal to zero, it's just gonna keep looping around, writing zeros out of bounds, writing values from the message out of bounds. So again, visualizing that, 493 into 510, 494, 511, 495, et cetera. So basically this leads to a sort of, you know, semi-attacker controlled primitive where essentially they get three bytes of attacker controlled data followed by two bytes of zeros and they just keep overflowing the buffer continuously past that. So, you know, we have to have some justification of why this out of bounds things might be attack controlled and not just garbage values. So let me give you a notion of how an exploit might groom the heap in order to achieve this. Now, I'm just kind of making this up because the original uh, write-up didn't have anything about exploitation. It was just talking about the vulnerability. 
So I don't actually know whether operand is dynamically allocated or some global data or something like that. And I don't really care enough about uh, Linux octals and stuff like that to go figure it out. Someone else can go ahead and, you know, examine this more deeply than someone that cares about Linux and to let me know how on, on or off base I am for this. So if it was dynamically allocated, an attacker would start grooming the heap by just causing some victim allocations like so, and they don't necessarily care about what the contents are. What they care about is that they can free up some locations and then cause some acid to be allocated in the hole that they just made. Then they will free up a space for message right here and they will make sure that message gets allocated in there. And they will free up some space for the C of operand, you know, wherever else that lands. And they will have made sure that that message gets allocated adjacent to these acid contents, so that when eventually those out of bound reads are reading past the bounds of message, that they will still be reading attack control data. And then they will make sure that operand gets, you know, allocated somewhere else, wherever, it's all good. And then subsequently, this overflow is overflowing from message to operand. And so as long as message has acid stuff past it, it's ultimately going to overflow that and then, you know, hit some victim data right there, for instance. So that's just a notion of how this could potentially be exploited. So let's go ahead and look at the fixes for this. So the first fix right here, if data length greater than size of message minus four. So is this an okay sanity check? Well, data length is an integer, a signed integer. So I would tend to say no, that is not a correct sanity check because an attacker could set that to completely attacker controlled data, could make it a negative value. And if negative gr greater than, you know, some positive number, well, that's never gonna be true. So it's never going to hit this error condition right there and it'll continue on and pass in a negative data length. Now, as we saw in the actual internals of that, uh, you know, a negative value was not actually beneficial to the attacker. So, you know, still potentially it could be achieving its goal, but, you know, at face value, doing a signed sanity check that uses a, allows for a negative value to completely bypass the sanity check is incorrect. And, you know, that's the future module. That's what you're gonna learn about in the next uh, module. Then I would also just point out that, you know, having all of these things as signed integers is extremely bad practice. Again, for reasons we cover in the next module, these things can never have legitimate leg negative lengths. Like a negative length is not valid for these buffers. A negative read position, a negative write position, completely not valid, not what the programmer likely intends. You know, as far as I can tell, they never, you know, legitimately expect those things to have negative values. So all that does is leave wiggle room for an attacker to utilize these other integer issues that we'll learn about in the next module of the class to potentially do things like bypassing sanity checks as you just saw with the previous one and otherwise give them wiggle room to still exploit things. Moving on to the next sanity check, we've got while read position plus four is less than length. Well, that is not a significantly good improvement on the original while read position is less than length because we said that Although this couldn't be a negative value because then it wouldn't actually get into the while loop, uh, it can be an extremely large positive value. So while, you know, some read position is less than 2 billion, well, that's probably not what you're looking for in a sanity check. This part, though, is actually an adequate sanity check because, you know, we saw that the maximum write positions were things like, you know, 505, 510, stuff like that. So let's consider, you know, if the reposition was all the way up to 500, for instance, and then 500 plus four, is that greater than or equal to 509 minus four? So yes, that is going to be less than that. So it will not hit this error, but if it was ever at 501, then that would be, is 505 equal to 505? And the answer would be yes, and it would error out. So this sanity check, you know, the first component is definitely wrong, and the second component is correct. Moving forward, now here again, read position. Well, if read position is greater than 2 billion, then it's an error, but for all positions less than 2 billion, it's okay? No, that's clearly wrong, right? That is, you know, that would stop a negative value, but that doesn't stop these extremely large positive values. So that's not great. And moving on to the next sanity check. All right, we've got this, which says, you know, this was that semi-attack controlled value. 
uh, which you know would go down as the right position increased. So that was you know generally okay sanity check that we we're talking about before. And so this is still okay in the sense of you know the maximum value here could be five. And then you'd have, you know, 509 minus 4 minus 500, and that would be okay. But the second portion that was added in that wasn't there before is clearly and definitely wrong. So while this value is greater than extremely large positive value minus, you know, some small positive value, well, that is, you know, definitely not going to be providing the sanity check you want. So again, sanity check, second one completely wrong, and the first one is appropriate. But the first one is interesting because this sanity check, in some sense, uh, doesn't work. There's there's sort of like a boundary condition that could have occurred here, uh, where you know you could have like walked right up to the boundary of the thing, and then you wouldn't have had actually overflowed it with the mem copy, but then you would have looped around in the while loop, and you would have still done like five out of bound writes. But that's where actually that first sanity check right up at the beginning of the while loop. Uh, you know, at least half of the sanity check portion there was what was actually going to save you because we saw that when the right position got too close to the end, it did successfully stop it from continuing. So ultimately, this was not a great batch of sanity checks. And, you know, some maybe someday I'll point this out to the Linux people, but, you know, this is your opportunity to get out there and, you know, help improve the Linux kernel if you're interested in such things and go help them add better sanity checks. But before you do, make sure that you watch the next section on other integer issues. Otherwise, you could just continue to have bypassable sanity checks thanks to things like signed sizes, which you definitely don't want.